Yeah, thanks for the intro. Um, you know, like you said, I'm Jake. This is Josh. Um, we're site reliability engineers at IBM. And today we're going to talk about how we are managing our secrets uh, via GitOps. So uh, uh, I already got a good intro, but just a little bit more background. Um, I'm from Michigan, a very small old town in Michigan. Um, and I graduated from Central Michigan University with a computer science degree. Um, I started my career at IBM. I went to Red Hat for a little bit, and then I came back to IBM um, as an SRE um, just a couple years ago. Um, some things that I'm really into, um, like Argo CD, like you mentioned, cloud native, Terraform, um, operators and customer resources and, and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, I'm Josh. Yeah, I've um, uh, been here since uh, 2018, May 2018 at IBM from NC State University. I've been in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm just happy to be here. So, quick and yeah. All right. Uh, so, a little bit of background um, just to talk about our journey into Kubernetes. So, um, the team that we um, are on, we started out managing, just um, supporting just one development team. That was um, that had this big monolith um, that was deployed to WebSphere. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and everything was being done manual. You know, we'd um, when the time was right, we had these jars and we'd just manually deploy them to the server. Um, so, and all that setup was done manually just by a, a small team um, of just uh, a few. Um, but that monolith started to grow and started to get slow. Um, performance started to suffer. So we decided, let's look at you know breaking this up into microservices and look for a platform as a service. That's where we went into uh, public cloud with Cloud Foundry. Um, and this worked really nice because we were able to you know, break up the monolith. But being a small team, um, it did become a little cumbersome, especially as we got more um, developers under our support. So it went from just you know, one application with these microservices to two, three, four, five applications um, and all their separate uh, microservices. And so it was becoming hard to orchestrate them, right? Um, so that is where Kubernetes came into. We um, wanted to use Kubernetes to help simplify this process, um, which <laughs> simplify and not simplify. But um, you know, it, took, it helped orchestrate these and um, these different applications and helped us, you know, to be a small team and manage um, multiple um, developer teams. But with that, um, we did notice, you know, a lot more resources. There was a lot more managing with these clusters. Um, you know, a lot of these resources that were necessary to be there for these applications, pull secrets, um, RBAC, um, all these different resources that we didn't really have to manage um, with Cloud Foundry. Um, these are now all under our control and all being done manually. We were, you know, um, applying these things man manually into clusters. So we had an observation or observability problem where we weren't sure what was in what cluster, um, you know, who, who needed what RBAC. Um, we even had problems where we deployed and oh, the pull secret wasn't there and nothing was pulling um, in production. So um, a lot of these problems. And so we tried to look, how can we solve this problem? How could we have this observability? How could we be able to check these things into code, into Git, right? Um, you know, and get these things into our cluster um, in a stable and reliable way. And so um, that leads us to GitOps, right? Um, I'm not going to go deep into GitOps. I know there's a lot of, you know, there was GitOps Con yesterday, and there's a lot more going on with GitOps um, earlier and, and later. Um, but just, I just want to talk about the like the four main principles that were developed by the um, GitOps working group. Um, starting with the declarative state, right? This is um, this is where like something like Kubernetes is really great because, right? You have these manifests; they're declarative um, by nature. Um, you can check these into source code, and it's telling you exactly what you want Kubernetes to do. Um, which is really nice, and it doesn't have to be Kubernetes, right? It can be any sort of any sort of system that you are having this declarative state um, defined. Um, and then second, the mutable desired state. This is um, right. This is Git, right? This is the Git part of it. Um, and again, it doesn't necessarily have to be Git. It can be some sort of other version control. But you know, um, having this, um, you know, these um, the history of the commits and being able to. Um, <laughs> Oh, you're killing me. Oh, just, just ignore it. <laughs> All right, we're good. We're good. It's fine. It's fine. Um, right. Git. Sorry about that. Um, the third part, this is um, the part that, to me, differentiates from something like infrastructure as code. Um, it's the reconciliation. 
having something like a controller that is watching your Git, it's watching your cluster or your other your system, um, and it's it's constantly checking. Oh, I, is there something new in Git? Do I need to put that in a cluster? Is there something new in the cluster that's not in Git? What do I do with those? Um, and it's con constantly checking um, and doing that that reconciliation. So that's um, uh, you know really big part of GitOps. And then the last part is the operations through declaration. Um, this is like to me the something that really like resonates with me here. It's it's that if you're doing something like in order to like be doing GitOps, right? You're you're going through the principles of GitOps to do GitOps, right? It's you're not applying things directly into a cluster. You are always following these principles so that if someone is manually applying into a cluster, GitOps is able to, with your reconciliation, is able to detect that, say this is not supposed to be here, and it can remove it if you like, have the correct policies in place. Um, and for me, that's, that's pretty powerful. Okay. So, I uh, went a little f faster there, but <laughs> so we have these clusters that we want to manage these resources via GitOps. Um, we did some, um, you know, experimenting, some searching, trying to understand what uh, a tool for us would work, and for us, Argo CD was that solution. Um, with this, uh, we, we chose Argo because you know we did like the uh, user interface aspect of it. Um, it. You know, it's really nice and clean being able to kind of see these things without having to maybe do a little bit of guesswork. Um, the um, we wanted to because we're a small team we wanted to have one um, Argo C instance in many clusters um, so being able to have a, that multi-tenant multi-cluster aspect of um, Argo CD was really nice the extensibility um, this one is key for <laughs> this talk so I will come back to that later um, but Argo CD you know, allows you to be able to use different tooling in, um, you know within Argo CD which is nice um, CNCF incubating, you know, we, that's something that when I was looking at doing this, I wanted to make sure as trying to push toward that CNCF, um, you know, tooling. So that was really important. And also we were looking to move from something like a plain YAML to Helm to be able to template out our resources. Um, so that was also very important for us. Um, so yeah, Jake, are we going to talk about secrets? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about secrets, just a little bit of background. Um, so the biggest question I always get when I talk about GitOps is, well, what do we do about secrets? Um, and it's a valid question, right? Because we have right, everything in Git, um, and I'm telling you to put everything in Git, but you know, we've always been told not to put our secrets in Git. So, um, you know, so we, that's something we had to, had to try and solve. We wanted to do these resources, we wanted to use Argo CD, but how do we do secrets? And Argo CD doesn't necessarily have a native secret solution. Um, they kind of go with the um, mentality of, you know, um, however you want to do it, right? There, there's different solutions. It's not our, um, we're not opinionated, opinionated about it. So, um, you know, you can, you can kind of do what makes sense for you. So with that in mind, we had a certain set of requirements that we were going to need um, for this secret solution. Um, you know, obviously, we talked about Argo, so we wanted to be able to work with Argo CD. Um, our, our secret manager solution was to use HashiCorp Vault um, because that's you know what we had internally um, and um, also you know an open source product so we wanted to continue to to work with that as well as um, IBM Cloud um, was building a um, secret manager solution based off Vault so we figured that was the way so we wanted to continue with Vault um, we wanted to be we wanted this to be able to work with all resources so we had a couple of use cases internally that. We were we we were um, putting things into Vault that would then be added into something like a config map or a custom resource. And a lot of solutions that we were looking for, or looking at, they were just about the secrets themselves. Um, so we just decided. Um, okay. Uh, so we just decided let's just make it work for all resources. Um, we didn't want to have an operator to install this. We wanted it to be very simple. Um, so the idea was we wanted to just have um, like uh, environment variables or a config file to be able to run this thing without having to do this big installation inside of a cluster. Um, and again, you know, we wanted to be able to um, use it with Helm and other things. Uh, so the idea was uh, very simple. <laughs> we wanted to have uh, a YAML resource in um, a Git repository. 
where the um, value, where the value would normally go, we would template it out with this um, this kind of like placeholder syntax, something that we had used on a, a, a legacy um, system. So we wanted to continue using this because it would also allow us to use our already defined YAMLs. Um, we wanted then Argo CD to be able to pull this, do something, apply it in a cluster, and then we get our value when it applies it. So very simple idea, right? YAML and Git with a placeholder, Argo CD, and then in the cluster, we get our um, you know secret. And the way we were able uh, to do this, um, the move, um, you know, talking about that Argo CD extensibility, was the uh, custom tools um, ability that Argo CD has. So Argo CD, right, they have their native like um, transformation tools like uh, Helm, Customize, Plain YAMLs, um, but they also allow you to define your own tool. So um, this is really nice because you can basically just either you know run an init can, an init container with the Argo CD repo server or you can just bake it into your repo server image. Um, and then you put it in a certain directory, which Argo CD will look into for these custom tools. You then register it, um, look at the step two up in the top right, or you just, then you can register it with um, exactly what you want this command to do. Um, so you can give it a name and you tell, oh, I wanna run this command with these arguments. And then in the UI, you'll see that, you know, your custom plugin then is part of the, the plugins drop down because when you in the UI you'll have like the different native um, options when you're creating an application, but they have a plugin option where you can then select from the, your list of custom tools. And so, uh, with all that being said, that is um, you know our requirements, how we wanted it to work, how we how we were able to get it work, and with that we built um, the Argo CD Vault plugin um, mentioned in our uh, intro. Um, and this is a plugin that allows us to um, take these YAMLs, um, run them through Argo CD, reach out to different secret managers, pull the values, replace the, the placeholders from the couple slides before, and then apply them into the cluster. Um, we started off with just HashiCorp Vault and the IBM Cloud Secret Manager, again, which is based off the HashiCorp Vault. Um, yeah, but then we realized there's much more secret managers you know, that are not uh, HashiCorp vault based. So we wanted to do some of the other main ones. So we then built in support for AWS secret manager and then GCP and Azure were actually added um, via the community, which is really nice. Um, so that's something that we didn't actually have to do. So thank you community. Um, and with this, with this tool, some of the features is we, um, we do versioning. Um, we have multiple different ways of defining um, where you want to, like where you want to tell Argo CD, or I'm sorry, where you want to tell the plugin to go look for the secrets. So you can either add an annotation or you can build it right into the, um, the placeholder itself. Um, we call inline path um, to tell, you know, to tell the plugin where to go find these secrets. Um, it can be used with Helm and Customize, and um, there's different authentication methods. Um, Josh, Josh is going to show you um, using the um, Kubernetes auth within a HashiCorp vault um, and how you can get that set up. Um, so just a high level um, to try and uh, kind of paint this full picture. So, and, and hopefully um, you can see this in the back. But so in Git, we put our YAML with the annotation and our placeholder. So the annotation is our path to uh, Vault, and the placeholder is the um, the key, right? So in Vault, you have your key value. So that's the key from Vault that you put in the placeholder. We have Argo CD, which is watching that repo. Um, and when it detects a new change, right, Argo CD does its thing, it pulls it in. We, you specify that you wanna use the Argo CD Vault plugin as the custom tool, so it knows to run the binary that you've set up in your, um, you know, in the Argo CD custom tool plugins. It then makes the call out to Vault based on your path, returns the values, um, does the replacement, outputs YAML back to Argo CD, and then Argo CD will apply it into your cluster. Um, so, you know, at, at a high level, that's what that's what it does. And um, Josh is gonna show how to set that up and a couple different um, useful use cases that we've found um, for Argo CD Vault plugin. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thanks a lot, Jake. All right, so here we go, doing the demo. Let's hope this works. <laughs> okay, so today uh, I'm basically going to go through this, and I'm going to show you how we can use the Argo CD Vault plugin. I'll, call, I'll probably refer to it as ADP at some point, shorter. Uh, this repo is publicly available. The link will be on the last slide I'll show later. It'll show everything here in good detail, and there's readme's all over, so you can follow along what we're talking about. So to get started, let me zoom in here so we can see. Uh, we need to get Argo CD deployed with AVP installed, right? So Jake pretty much explained how that's done, but I'm going to show you in a little more detail. What I'll show you is uh, doing it with Customize. I'm basically going to use a Customize bundle, uh, make a few changes so that we have the repo server plugin, and then I'll have the, I'll show you how you know, that works out. So if we go to my repo in this Argo CD overlays folder and we look at the customization YAML, what you'll see is we're basically taking the upstream manifest from the Argo CD project at version 201, and we're making two important changes. We're changing the repo server deployment. Uh, the repo server is where the, is the context in which an Argo custom plugin runs in. And then we're going to change the config map resource. So the repo server is so we can actually download our plugin, and the config map is so we can register it as something Argo CD can use. So to show you what that looks like, if we go over here to the repo server YAML, we'll see basically what we're doing is we just have this you know, empty directory Kubernetes volume that we're creating, an ephemeral volume. We have our init container. In this case, what we're doing is we're basically downloading the uh, latest release of the plugin from GitHub releases. So that's version 140 here. And we're basically putting it in this custom tools uh, volume. What we'll then do is we'll take our repo server container, which again is the actual thing we want to have our plugin in, and we're just going to mount it here at user local bin so it's available on our path, and we can then reference it as an Argo CD plugin in the config map. Um, so at this point, we have AVP downloaded and installed. It's just a matter of configuring it, right? And there are multiple ways to actually configure AVP to be able to communicate with your secret manager, like Jake mentioned. What we're going to do today, because it's KubeCon, is we're going to show Kubernetes off. So what that means here is uh, basically we're going to have a Vault instance uh, running in our Kubernetes cluster here, and we're going to have the two communicate to each other using Kubernetes off. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically telling uh, AVP that we're communicating with a HashiCorp Vault instance. That's our secret manager backend. We're telling it where it's located, so it's just going to be here in our cluster. I'm going to make that. Uh, we're going to use Kubernetes auth to be able to authenticate to it, and we're going to use the Argo CD Vault role. And I'm going to show you uh, how we set up the roles in Vault so that Kubernetes auth works. And then finally, because the repo server doesn't usually have the service account token mounted, and you need a service account token to actually do Kubernetes off, uh, we just you know, make sure to have one mounted. So all that to say, uh, you have this custom, oh, sorry, one more thing. I just showed you the repo server. I didn't show you the config map. So the last thing is just actually being able to register it as an Argo plugin. Uh, what you'll see here is I have two different plugins uh, sort of described here. I'll talk about the Helm one in a second, or a little bit later, but the simple one here is just called Argo CD Vault. And what you'll see is all it does is it just runs our Vault plugin binary, generate command on dot slash, dot slash being the YAMLs that you have uh, of the Argo app that you're trying to deploy. So it'll run you know, the plugin through those YAMLs, replace the placeholders, and send the rest to standard out so that Argo can apply them. Um, Yep, and I've got you know credentials so I can actually pull from Git. Cool. So now I think I've shown you everything. Uh, I think I've already gone ahead and set up port forward so I can actually show you the Argo CD UI. Looks like we're good. Uh, I have this Vault instance deployed. We'll talk about that in a second. But just to show you that the plugin's been installed correctly, we can do what Jake was describing, where this is the Argo CD app form where you can fill this out to make an Argo app. And here at the bottom, you can choose to do a plugin. And you'll see that we have our two plugins uh, here. So we are good to go. I'll zoom in a little bit here. OK. So that was Argo. We have the plugin. We're good. Now we just need Vault, right? Uh, and so this is, again, for the purpose of the demo, we're just going to deploy a simple Vault in our cluster here. This is not how you should do it in production, but just an example. Uh, so I have Vault. I'm using the Vault Helm chart to keep my life simple here. And if you look at how I've deployed the Vault Helm chart here in the parameter section, what you'll basically see is that I'm going to run the dev server, which you should not do in production. And I have this post start script. And what this post start script is doing is it's basically waiting for Vault to start up. We are creating a Vault policy uh, that allows reading secrets at the secret path. Uh, we're basically, so we're creating that policy in Vault, right? And then we're going to enable Kubernetes off. And we're going to tell Vault where our Kubernetes host is so we can actually talk to the Kubernetes master. And most importantly, uh, Maybe I have to zoom out so I can 
show all this. Yeah, uh, we are creating that Argo CD role. So this is the role that we configured AVP with earlier, right? So we could tell AVP, you know, log in with Vault and use this role. And we're granting that role to the default service account in the default namespace, because in this case, this is where the repo server is running. And most importantly, we are granting that demo policy that was created up here for uh, that service account. So we have everything we need. We have the repo server and we have Vault. Again, don't do it like this in production. This is just an example. So we've got Argo, we've got Vault. Now we can actually start to deploy things. So I'll start off with a simple example of a basic Git app. So just a collection of manifest in Git. What we're going to do is we're going to deploy an Nginx instance. And what we're going to do with this Nginx instance is we're just going to have it basically print out the value of a secret that we've deployed through AVP. So I've got a bunch of YAMLs here. First off, this is config map that basically contains an Nginx configuration file. Don't fret if you're not familiar with Nginx, just know that basically what this says is we listen on 8080, and for all requests, we're going to return a 200 with the value of this my secret environment variable. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's that, right? That's the Nginx. Where does the secret come from? Well, it's going to come from this Kubernetes secret. And this Kubernetes secret is what's going to be uh, created through AVP. And what you'll notice here is that this secret has a special annotation. This is the annotation Jake was referring to earlier, where we tell ABP where to look in Vault for our secrets. The way you read this example is there is a my nginx secret at this path, secret data, because uh, this is a Vault uh, using KV, the KVV2 engine. And inside of the secret, there's a password key. And I want to interpolate the value of that password key as part of the my nginx secret for this variable. That's how you read the syntax here, and that's what we're doing. So we have our config map, we have our secret, and then we just need an actual Nginx image so we can run this and actually you know, make this work, right? So we've got a little open RESTy image here using uh, port 8080, like we said earlier. We're going to mount our secrets through environment variables in this Nginx instance, and we're going to mount the config file where uh, Nginx expects it to be in this image. So I've put all this stuff in Git already. You can see them here in the apps slash git slash nginx slash manifest folder. So these are all the files that we're going to be deploying here. So I've already created them. So we have the code in git. Great, that's the first step for git ops. Now we just need to make our secret not in git. We're gonna put that in the secret manager. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna port forward to the vault service that I showed you I was running already. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just zoom in so you can see. Here we are, so we've got vault. Next, I'm going to basically set some vault variables so that I can talk to my vault instance. You should never use the vault, the root vault token. Uh, it should probably be disabled in any production uh, deployment of vault. But again, this is just a demo. So, okay, we should have everything we need. I'm going to create a secret called my nginx because that's what you know we said we were gonna do in our secret YAML with this key password and the value secret password. So here it is, all right, we've created a secret. And I'm going to read it back just so we can all agree that, yep, I put secret password. Okay. Now, there is a way you can create Argo apps, you know, because Argo CD uh, comes with the custom resource definition. You can create custom, or you can create apps through YAML. But I'm going to show it to you in the UI, uh, you know, just to make it uh, hit home a bit better. But you can easily do it with the, uh, just YAML. So here we are. We're going to make an app called MyNGINX. How fitting. Uh, I'm just going to put it in the default project. Not going to change any of the sync policies here. I'm going to use the one repo, this very repo that I have configured here. The path that contains my manifest is going to be this uh, this one here, apps get nginx manifests, apps get nginx uh, manifests. And I'm going to deploy to my local cluster and my default namespace. And the most important thing here is I got to tell Argo CD I want to use our plugin to deploy this. So Argo CD Vault. So I've got everything right here, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this Argo app. Okay, so what we see is we're currently in the out of sync state. So basically what Argo's done is it's looked at the, uh, those files that were in Git. It looked at what's in cluster and realized, hey, we have files that are not in Git. We have you know, resources that are not in our cluster and we're out of sync. So that's the yellow here. So we can easily go ahead and just synchronize these. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to run our plugin, actually interpolate the secrets, create the resulting secret in our cluster, and deploy an Nginx instance that's configured to read from it. So why don't we make sure that we did this right? Yeah, let's actually try to talk to our Nginx and see if it's returning the right values. So I'm going to port forward to this Nginx instance I have deployed. 
And if I go over to localhost 8081, which is where I'm running it, great. You see here we've got secret password. Great. So we've been able to show that we can deploy secrets and we can deploy apps that use them with Argo and AVP. Uh, now we just need to actually try modifying the secret in our secret manager, right? Because you know we, I can show you how to create one, but a big part of secret management is rotating them, you know, for reasons, uh, and it's an important use case to be able to handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a secret rotation by just uh, doing a vault KB put. So I'm going to put a new value for the secret. In this case, we're just going to put the phrase edited at the end. Uh, just read it back out for us real quick. And now the question is, how do we tell Argo CD that, that the secret changed? And this is where the concept of a hard refresh comes in. During a hard refresh of our, uh, an Argo app, Argo CD will take any custom plugins that you're using to deploy the app, do a dry run of those plugins, and compare the output to what's in cluster. And if there's a difference, then you'll be out of sync and you have the opportunity to resync. Uh, once we do that, we'll also need to restart our deployment since we're using environment variables in a pod and they only get refreshed when you restart those pods. So I'm going to zoom out here real quick. I'm going to do that hard refresh. All right, our secret's out of, uh, out of sync because we changed it in Vault. The plugin ran. We realized that what's in cluster does not match what we want it to be. And we can easily remedy that by syncing. So we've gone ahead and synchronized, and we need to restart the deployment, like I said. And we're going to get to have a new uh, Nginx starting up here soon. And now, if I just report forward back to our app, we'll be able to then refresh, and we see here secret password edited. So great, we did a secret rotation. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, okay, yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, I'm glad it worked too. Um, cool, so that was just a simple example of, of you know, a bundle of manifest in Git. Uh, but you can also use this tool with pretty much any sort of uh, YAML, JSON templating thing. It's really just a matter of having the placeholders in the, first sort of tool, have something rendered, and then have AVP uh, run through that. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy a Helm chart, right? So Helm charts basically template out a bunch of YAML, and we're basically going to use a Helm chart with AVP to deploy you know, an, an app with secrets. So I'm going to do a Redis instance here. So first, I'm going to create a, Redis, a secret for my Redis instance. I'm going to set the global password to shh with three H's. So let me go ahead and do that here. And I'll just read it back just to be sure I did that right. Cool. So we have that. And now it's just a matter of creating the Argo app. And this is a very simple example. I wouldn't recommend actually doing this for any real reason. But what you'll see here is that we've created a secret in our secret manager. And then we're just going to create an Argo app. Nothing else. And what you, when you look at this Argo app, what you'll see is that we're basically going to point to the Bitnami Redis uh, Helm chart for Redis and that we're going to use the Vault plugin, and then we're going to set, set some special uh, environment variables for that plugin. Uh, to explain this, let me go back to the config map where I showed you where there was the uh, second uh, plugin I registered. Uh, let me do that real quick. So if I go to Argo CD overlays again, and I go to this dash CM, right, I talked about this one, and this is what we've already seen. But there's also a version with Helm. And essentially, this is kind of showing the idea I said earlier, right? Where we basically need to just render out you know, our templates or our customized things or JSON or whatever, and then run AVP on the result to get YAML with secrets. And so what we're doing is we're basically just adding our uh, Helm repo and downloading the YAMLs that comprise the Redis chart. And then we're just going to run Helm template, filling in some stuff with Argo variables, and then actually generate the manifest with AVP. And you'll see this little Helm marks thing. This is basically our way of passing uh, things we want to pass to Helm, the command line invocation, uh, since you know we have to do this because it's a custom plugin. So this is just our way of being able to pass special flags to Helm. And we're taking advantage of that here so that we can basically require auth on our Redis and use the inline path placeholder that Jake was talking about. So this is the path, and we're going to use the password key in that secret we created, and we're going to use that to set this global Redis password. So real quickly here, because I want to be able to answer questions, I'm going to apply this. OK, let's try that one more time. I'm going to apply this Redis app. OK. And if I go back and zoom out, basically what we'll see here is, oh, no, what is this? Authentication required. Uh, not sure what I did wrong here. Oh, I think I, I, I think I might know. I, I don't have this repo configured with any credentials. So 
Okay, so I probably won't be able to fix this in time, but just know that basically if I had done this, uh, you know, we'd have, what you'd have seen is a set of uh, manifests just like we did here, but, you know, for all the YAMLs that comprise the Helm chart, and then if we had just synchronized them, you know, the plugin would have ran, replaced the placeholders, and we would have had a Redis instance deployed with our secret set to shh. So, sorry, I can't show you that. I must have messed with this the night before. So, I'm going to stop here so that we can take questions. So, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, can we go back to the presentation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> One more thing. Uh, this is the uh, slide with the links. So, we've got the repo link there. We've got documentation, you know, as part of our repo, our GitHub pages. And there's a demo repository where, if you don't take my word for it, you can be sure the Redis example works. So, and some blogs that have been written on this. So, uh, thanks. Um, so... So I think we have about two minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I'll run over with the Boy. microphone. And in the interest of time, <laughs> I'm just going to. All right. This is my mic. Hey, uh, when you have a state out of sync, yeah. like when you detect it, is there a way to actually check what the discrepancy is? Uh, good question. So because it was a secret that changed, the Argo UI will always redact the values of secrets, you won't actually be able to see, oh, the secret was previously secret password and now it's secret password edited. I, I, could, I don't know uh, what the difference is. You won't be able to do that. Um, really, I guess in that case, what I'd recommend is just going into the secret manager and taking a look. Um, but yeah. So. yeah hello. Um, how can we limit what secret path can Argo application can use? Well, let's say I want app B to be able to read this namespace in Vault for secrets, but not the other namespace from the other application. Uh, good question. So uh, when you're setting up Kubernetes, oh, oh okay. Uh, when you're setting up Kubernetes off, I believe there are ways you can actually configure that. Uh, especially, you can basically set like which service accounts can you know talk to Vault. Um, uh, yeah, that? so, um, may, may I? Um, yeah, so what you can do is, um, because um, it's based off uh, environment variables, Jesus, sorry, <laughs> um, you can go into the, uh, like when you're setting them up, you can set the specific environment variables for each, um, you know, um, deployment, and so you can, like, you can have certain applications use certain environment variables that point to the different um, uh, service accounts that you set up, and that way you don't have, like, one set of credentials, you can have these multiple set of credentials passed throughout environment variables for each sync, each um, different application that you deploy. Hopefully that makes sense. Is, is there a way to um, automate the part after you cycle the secrets where you have to go kill the pod? That's a good question. So, you know, Argus CD does have a REST API. So if you do have a way of like, uh, I don't know, you change a secret and then you have that call some sort of webhook, right? You could tell Argo CD, hey, do a hard refresh for this app. And that if you have automated sync, then you could have an automatic complete rotation. That's a good question. I think we have time for one last one. First hand up. Oh. So uh, is there a way not to put the bash scripts and stuff inside the YAML? Because, I mean, we moved to YAML definitions not to tell, you know, we just want to have the state, right? Not tell it how to do things. You know uh, what I mean? Sort of. So when we're you just say... defining the data inside a YAML, but now we're back telling them, oh, this is how you fetch a secret. This is how you render it. So I think to me, I mean, this is a great presentation, but it's kind of messy when I looked at the YAML file. Uh, so that's a fair, so if I understand correctly, you are talking about the, when we register the config, when we actually register the plugin in the Argo City config map and how we have to have that bash stuff to be able yeah. to tell it how, to, how it works. So that is fair. I will say that is a one-time thing, right? Because once you, have, once you have this set, I mean, you have it forever. You don't, you know, once you have an Argo CD that is using this config map, it's, it's good to go. You can deploy Helm charts all you want. And you just have to say, use this plugin. That's really it. Yeah. Like yeah. the complexity isn't. Yeah, at the end of the day, you just have to. I mean, you just have to be able to tell Argo C what to run. In this, in this case, it's just you have to tell it that it wants to run this command. So there's really no way around that unless Argo C D adopts a different way. Um, so that's just the only method we have to register the plugin to Argo C D. Right. Cool. I think that concludes the Q and A. So if you have any more questions. Please meet up with the presenters yeah. outside in the hall and don't forget to rate the session. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you everyone.